The new Apple TV has just landed and it's powered by the A12 Bionic chip. Today we're going to test some games and see how this chip helps with the performance on Apple TV. Our first game is SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. This may just be a children's game, but it actually is fairly advanced for Apple TV. With 1080p resolution, we can play at epic quality, and we can have anti-aliasing enabled. And all of this is running for the most part at about 60 FPS, and it's pretty smooth. There are a few frame rate drops, for example when you are in combat, or when there are many on-screen effects at once, but really it's not that dramatic. SpongeBob is one of the best games in my opinion for Apple TV, as it's also a very good console type game, with full controller support too. I really hope that Handy Games, who brought the game to Apple TV, consider adding rumble support and controllers, as that would be gosh dang fantastic. Next we have Inside. Inside was actually the first game that I played on my Apple TV 4K first generation, and it was the first time that I ever actually played the game was on Apple TV. Anyways, that's besides the point. Inside runs really well here, but it also ran really well on the previous Apple TV and kind of even on the Apple TV HD, but you'll see that in a future video. It's running at 60 FPS always, it's locked, and it is running at 1080p resolution. Now, Inside, graphically, it may not be the most advanced thing, but it has really good on-screen animations, it has very good shadows, and it's just, it's a really good story here that you will get lost into. If you've played Limbo, this is made by the same people, and it's really one of the best indie games out there. It's hauntingly beautiful. Okay, so NBA 2K21 is a mixed bag for a number of reasons. For starters, the camera angles here always target 30 FPS. Look at that guy's weird arm there, he's having a bit of a jitter. Anyways, when the game switches to cam the camera angle, it switches down to 30 FPS, and then when it exits that, it goes back up to 60 FPS. This is the same case on every single Apple device, iPhone, iPad. Apple TV and Mac. It's really bizarre and I really dislike it because it's really jarring to the eyes and it can make you a little bit disorientated. That's my experience anyway. Furthermore, the graphics quality here is targeting medium and high settings. You can enable and disable some stuff, but it's locked for the most part. I imagine that this A12 chip could handle the high or ultra high preset if 2K update this game for this new Apple TV, so we'll have to wait and see. Beach Buggy Racing 2 captures the Mario Kart feel on Apple TV. Previously there hasn't really been anything that has scratched that itch for me and this game, it kind of lives up to that, maybe even expands on it in some aspects. This game is absolutely hectic and the frame rate never drops at all. It's always a locked 60 FPS. Okay, I take that back. 59 FPS, but it's very, very consistent. We're running at 1080p and we can run at the detailed graphics preset, which is basically max settings. This game also has split screen multiplayer for up to four players. And even in that mode, the performance is exactly the same. The game also has full controller support, and when I say full, I mean full. It has rumble support on Apple TV. Your controller will vibrate when your vehicle lands on the ground, when you fire a weapon, or when you take damage, for example. This Apple TV version is the console version of Beach Buggy Racing 2. Compared to the free version on iPhone and iPad, it features upgraded graphics, a full adventure story mode, cross-platform tournaments, championship races, and more. I was really happy when Dead Cells came to Apple TV, and then I played it, and I was a little disappointed with the performance. So, at this current moment in time, it is targeting 30 FPS. However, the frame time is all over the place, as you can see. When you compare this to mobile, you are unable to run this game at 60 FPS, or with a no FPS cap and you are not able to enable high resolution. So the game does not look 
nearly as good. It's, it's harder to see in this YouTube video, but it is very evident when you play and compare it to the mobile devices. A lot of you wanted to see Ocean Horn 2 in this video, so here you go. The previous Apple TVs, the Apple TV HD and the Apple TV 4K first generation, really kind of struggled with this game, especially the HD, but that thing had an A8 chip and it was a potato. This one is the A12 and it should be doing better, but let's not forget this game and pretty much none of the games right now have been optimized for this hardware, so it is still running at 30 FPS and you can't enable 60 FPS and the frame time is kind of bonkers. Even though the game is managing 30 FPS, it is very inconsistent in the frame time. Who knows, maybe they will put out a 60 FPS update because other devices with the A12 Bionic are able to run this game at 60 FPS and have much better performance. So we'll have to wait and see. If that's something you guys would like to see, if this game gets updated, a video about it, let me know and I can do that. It isn't wildly known, but the Apple TV 4K first generation and second do have the ability to play games at 4K resolution. Interloper is one of those games that supports 4K resolution. But let's bear in mind though, the Apple TV is not a 4K gaming machine, really. It's up to developers to optimize their game really well and Games also need to be not that graphically advanced or else you will see a major drop in frame rate. Interloper is doing fairly well. It can be inconsistent in the frame time sometimes, but that is mainly when you are shooting those massive guns. I'm hoping that the developer of this game, who I talk to quite often actually, hello if you're watching, uh, I hope that he updates this game so that the frame rate can just be a little bit more consistent when you are shooting, because that is the only time that I have seen when the frame rate drops, when you were just flying around, it is fine. So when Asphalt 8 originally landed on Apple TV way back in 2015, it was one of the launch titles, it was targeting 1080p native and 30 FPS. However, the game had really, really bad performance. If you watch Digital Foundry's video on the original Apple TV, you can see how bad the optimization was. It's a little bit better now. I would say it's kind of maybe 30% better because the game can target 60 FPS. That's what it's going for. It doesn't always reach that. And the resolution has been improved on 4K models to 4K resolution. What I'm hoping here is that Gameloft actually lower the resolution to 1080p so that the game can get 60 FPS consistently, or they could just optimize the game for this model at 4K and allow it to get 60 FPS. That would be kind of cool. The Pathless is probably one of the most taxing games for Apple TV. Now, it is not supported on the Apple TV HD as the A8 chip is, as I said, a potato and not supported. And the A10X chip on the Apple TV HD, there are so many different things to remember. That device also is supported, but it does struggle with its frame rate of, of maintaining it. It is a teeny weeny bit better here, but not that much. But let's also remember that this game has really bad optimization on pretty much every single Apple device out there, even the most powerful ones, like a Mac with a dedicated graphics card. I just don't get why this game is so badly optimized. Now on Apple TV and mobile Apple platforms, the game targets 30 FPS and is running at a a uh, lower graphical preset. I'm going to make a guess that it is running at medium quality here, but I was unable to confirm this with the developer. I would personally not play this game on, on any Apple TV right now until the developer, Giant Squid, or Annapurna Interactive, update the game for this hardware. Because really, this game is most enjoyable with 60 fps just with how it's set up in terms of the movement of shooting your arrow jumping around the map it really does benefit from a high frame rate 
one thing the Pathless has going for it is rumble support in your controller. So it will vibrate when you shoot at things and when you jump and when there are explosions and so forth. F1 2016 is my favorite racing game on Apple TV. It's the most realistic in a sense. It's about five years old now and graphically it doesn't hold up that well. Back in the day I thought it was pretty cool, um, but uh, it has aged a little bit, but it's not it's not terrible. Uh, it is nowhere near the graphical detail of the PC and console version obviously, but this is more of a mobile type experience on a console. It's, it's targeting 30 FPS and 1080p resolution. Now the developer has not updated this game in years, so I don't imagine that it will be updated anytime soon or ever in the future because F1 2016 is, you know, it's, it's old. Now the developer is focusing on F1 Mobile Racing, but that game doesn't have a TV version, which sucks and I hope they bring it to Apple TV. Abulite Studios brought Hyperlight Drifter to Apple TV. Now I really love this game. It's one of the best indie games out there on the App Store. And the Apple TV version is targeting 4K resolution and it looks absolutely gorgeous if you have a 4K display. However, the downside is that the game is targeting 30 FPS. This was a little bit confusing to me as the mobile version is targeting 60 FPS and the iPad Pro version is targeting 120 FPS. I personally think this game does benefit much more from a higher frame rate, especially for the combat and shooting all the enemies and the explosions. It will be interesting to see if Abilite decide to update this game for Apple TV. Samurai Jack. So this game has relatively good performance. It's usually targeting 60 FPS. However, it does have some rather big uh, frame rate drops there. Now the graphical detail here is actually much better than what I expected it to be. The previous Apple TV 4K, the graphical detail was quite reduced and seemingly in the past few months it has been updated on the previous Apple TV 4K and this one. So it is looking significantly better. This game also is incredibly fun because when enemies shoot you and you get damage, your character slowly loses his clothing it's really, it's a really cool feature. And it's one of the only games on Apple Arcade that has a full dismemberment system because, you know, Apple Arcade doesn't have many violent games in that sense. And this is kind of the most violent and you should check it out. It's really, it's such a good game that it has kind of open locations, platform locations, action sequences, shooting sequences. It's great. Alto's Odyssey is a Gorgeous, gorgeous game. And the Apple TV really enhances the experience of what it has on offer. It's one of the best platform type games out there or just free riding games. The Apple TV 4K version here has some issues though. Yes, it is targeting 4K resolution and 60 FPS. However, there are some inconsistencies in there. Whereas the Apple TV 4K first generation doesn't have this. And it goes on further, there are some graphical bugs. As you will notice, the cape from the person who you are controlling here has some issues going on behind him. I don't know what that's called, but it's kind of bugging out behind him and it is a little bit distracting, but at the same time, it is kind of amusing. After Pulse was another launch title for Apple TV way back in 2015, and it was going for a console type experience. However, for me, it doesn't really deliver that. Don't get me wrong, it's really, really fun, but the combat, the way you aim, it just, it doesn't feel very uh, nice. And the way the characters move, it kind of feels like they are Michael Jackson moonwalking around the place. It kind of just feels like they're not connected to the ground in that sense, but it's still a good time. It's just a, a silly game that you, you can really get into. And the multiplayer here is really, really active. Anyways, I went on a bit of a rant there. The Apple TV version here is locked at 30 frames and the frame time can be a little bit inconsistent. I'm hoping that the developer adds 60 FPS because I know they regularly update this Apple TV version and 
they are very passionate about this platform. So if they are watching this, 60 FPS would be yeah. So if you watched my previous video testing games on the new iPad Pro with Apple M1, you would have seen that Beyond a Steel Sky had mixed performance. And it is sadly the same kind of experience here. So the Apple TV version also targets 30 FPS. The graphical detail is also considerably lower compared to the Mac version. And the frame time is not great, even when you are just walking around outside. It is unfortunately not a very enjoyable experience on this platform. And it could be so much better because the A12 Bionic is a fairly powerful chip. Another customer. Rush Rally 3 is one of the other games on Apple TV with rumble support with the controller, and it is awesome. You'll feel your controller vibrate when you go around corners, when you collide with other cars. It is very immersive. Rush Rally 3 on Apple TV also supports up to 4K resolution and high graphics. You can enable both of these from the settings menu. As you can see, I'm playing at 4K resolution here, and the game has mixed performance at this resolution. If you want a consistent 60 FPS, you should lower the resolution to 1080p. However, despite the game looking a bit like a early PS3 or late PS2 game, it does look really, really nice at 4K resolution. And as I said in my previous video, showing this on the iPad Pro, this game has a really, really good damage system that basically not many racing games on the App Store have. Badland Plus is a part of Apple Arcade's App Store Great section. This is a new section on Arcade that brings some of the best paid games of the past to Arcade. The Apple TV version has really good performance. I know it's not really a taxing game, but it's still worth talking about because Badland is a beautiful game and it was actually one of the games that I played when I broke my hand and I couldn't use a gaming controller, I could only use the Siri remote. It's one of the best games to take advantage of the Siri remote, even on the new Apple TV. And as you can see, it gets 60 FPS always. Badland also lets you connect controllers to play with several players on Apple TV. It's really fun to see how well you can all survive together. Again, Beat Sports was a launch title for Apple TV, and Apple and the developer were wanting to kind of encapsulate the Wii Sports experience from Nintendo. Did they deliver with that? Um, maybe, maybe not. I personally really enjoyed this game because it's basically Wii Sports plus rhythm, and I just thought it was really fun going against the music. Some people, it wasn't for them, and that's okay. Back in the day too, the game had really, really, really bad optimization. It's still targeting 30 FPS, the frame time was so bad, but now it is just completely flat for the most part, and that's really good to see. However, the developer has not updated this game in years. In fact, they've completely, really abandoned this version and gone to the Switch version. So I don't imagine that we'll see an update in terms of resolution, graphics, or frame rate, anytime soon, if ever. The surprising thing is this game has no controller support and it would it, it says that this game requires the Apple TV first generation controller. However, it works perfectly fine with the second generation controller. However, there is no gyroscope on the Apple TV second generation controller, so you will just have to tap to be in the rhythm. It's not as fun as swinging the remote, but it gets the job done. World of Demons is one of my favorite console games in Apple Arcade, mainly because it just has excellent performance on everything, which sadly a lot of Apple Arcade games don't, even though Apple curate the games on the service, which is weird. It definitely has a weird gameplay approach, and it is based a lot around Japanese folklore, but I'm really all for it. It's so fun and so addicting and so gosh dang hectic. I die a lot in this game, but I keep jumping back in because it's so addicting. Anyway, I can play at high graphics on this Apple TV, and the frame rate is, for the most part, staying at 60 FPS. On the Apple TV 4K, 
first generation, I would have to play at the medium graphical preset to get 60 FPS. So there is a bit of a performance gain there with the A12 Bionic. So Real Racing 3, I really, really, really dislike. And Real Racing 3 really dislikes me. Don't get me wrong, I like the gameplay and the graphics are okay. They're not that amazing really. They're way overhyped for what's on offer. The reason why I dislike this game is because the iCloud backup never works. It's one of the worst I've ever seen. Literally, when I close this game and reopen it, my saves are gone. It's so infuriating, it is so annoying. And every time I have to do the tutorial, and it takes ages and I'm just sick of it. I'm sick of playing this game because it never recovers my iCloud backup. Even though I sync it all and everything, it's just, it's not nice to me. Anyways, the game is getting 30 FPS. Um, it does actually look like it's playing at 60 FPS because it is kind of a fast paced game, but it is getting 30. And it also has four player uh, local split screen, which is really, really cool. I just want the game to save my iCloud backups. Why? Why don't you work? Hiroki is an underappreciated gem. For me, it kind of has a massive Nintendo vibe going on for it. In fact, the game was one of the most popular Apple TV games back in 2015, and lots of people asked for a Nintendo Switch version. Back in 2017 also, or maybe it was 2018, it received quite a big update on Apple TV with 4K resolution support, a higher frame rate, and a revamped control uh, interface and layout. It is a really fun addicting game. It's made by the people who made Monimals on Apple Arcade, so the art style is very similar. The gameplay is also quite similar, but it isn't based so much around music compared to Monimals. A lot of people don't know that Octodad is on Apple TV and it upsets me because it's a really good game. It also has four player, same device multiplayer, which you're like, how does that work when this game is all about awkward controls and moving your arms and legs? Well, with four players, one controls one arm, one controls the other arm, one controls the leg, and one controls the other leg. It is absolutely hilarious. I played this with my friends once and you just, you can't stop laughing because it just, it doesn't work. And that's, that's why it's funny because you have to work together or else you're gonna stuff up. Anyways, the Apple TV version uh, has fairly decent performance. It targets 60 FPS, but it doesn't ever really reach that. It's getting about 53 to 54 FPS on average. Space Marshals 2, this is Space Marshals 3, was one of the most downloaded games on Apple TV. And recently we got Space Marshals 3, which improves on every aspect of that game, visually and gameplay wise. It is a great, great top-down game that provides a very good console experience. This version has also great optimization, 60 FPS, and you can play at 100% resolution and the detail level can be on high. The game has excellent shooting gameplay that is really satisfying if you can nail the shots because it can be a little bit hard to aim at first and then get used to it and it's really, really awesome. Dandara. So this game was previously really good to play with the Siri remote, but now it doesn't work with the Siri second generation. So you'll have to use your controller. This game is pretty hectic. You can move so fast in this game and it's not that graphically advanced. Obviously, it's just a 2D game, but it can get really hectic with so many enemies on screen, so many explosions coming out of your fists. It is a very unique platformer with very unique mechanics in terms of how you jump around and how you shoot at enemies. As you can see, the game gets 60 FPS for the most part, but it does have some dips in there. Our last game is Warp Drive which is a really bizarre racing game. So Warp Drive has a weird mechanic where you can teleport around the map. It also has two player split screen. The graphics in this game are kind of weird too because it's got massive saturation, like really high saturation, really colorful saturation, should I say. And the game is locked at 30 FPS, which is very unfortunate for me because 
This game, if you play it on Mac, it targets 60 FPS there, and it's really, really good with the high frame rate. With all of the colors on screen, when you teleport, and it does the weird teleportation effect, it looks really nice with a high frame rate. So I'm hoping the developer update this for the A12 chip, because I would say that it should be possible with this chip. Anyway, are you going to buy the Apple TV 4K second generation. Has this video helped you with your decision on buying this product? What do you think of the device overall? For me, Apple TV is a very underappreciated platform. Most people don't even know that games are on Apple TV. Go out there and ask someone and they will probably say, what are you talking about? It has so much potential there, but it is held back because hardly any developers bring games to it because there is such a small audience there. So I'm really hoping that this upgrade helps with the potential and there are also rumors that Apple will bring out a new Apple TV at WWDC or later that even has better specs than, than this one and is more gaming focused. Anyway, leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date with everything Apple gaming related and Apple TV gaming related. My name is Stewie and thanks for watching.